and you can easily imagine other types of discourse relations between the circumstances. And now we have a uh, we have a complex infrastructure, and one as uh, one significant challenge we face is this graph is actually a signal graph. And here I highlight where the cycle came from. So even if we only consider the adjacent relation and the dependency relations, there will be circles. And if you add other discourse relations, there will be it will be more complicated. So the goal of the graph logical memory network is to capture different types of dependencies in a unified model. And the different types we consider is the adjacent types, syntactic type. Um, co-reference co and discourse uh, analysis. And we want you to be able to capture long distance analysis. But the challenge here is how to define a neural net architecture over a signal graph so that the learning is visible. There are several work beyond the linear gen structure at OSTM. Three OSTM is proposed for our sentiment analysis and recently it is um, apply to the relation extraction and obtain very good results. And also in the pro programming verification literature, people propose a gate graph neural networks. And in their architecture, they also face the same problem as us. They have a single graph. And their solution is to, uh, uh, to approximate this single graph by unroll the recurrent into several types of steps. The step is a the step is a hyperparameter t that you can tune. And this is analogous to uh, several iterations of new propagation. And the, the problem of this approach is it's, it's, it's very expensive because it requires many steps uh, over a whole graph for one type of and also, the information would not be able to propagate through the whole uh, graph of the through the whole distance of the node, and it will be restricted by the time set t. And our solution here is also to approximate a single graph, but uh, our solution is more simple based on the observation that all directed single graph can be decomposed. Well, uh, into two directly or single graphs. More specifically, uh, given any topological order, we can put all the arcs from left to right according to the topological order uh, for the in the forward pass, and we put all the arcs from right to left in the backward pass. Uh, and in our pilot study, we just use the sequence, natural sequence order of the input as our topological order. Um, in this way, it's like a bio-STM. Well, for each pass, we will take the input and produce that output representation. And we will contaminate them together to use it as a representation produced by the second graph. And uh, in, this, um, in this way, we successfully decompose the second graph into two paths. And in each step, the topological order is well defined and we can do that propagation through that order and we can successfully trim our model. And here I want to highlight the, difference between the differences between the chain OSTM and the, this graph OSTM, considering only one back. Uh, the major difference is in the graph OSTM, you will have more predecessors uh, than the linear chain. So we will uh, sum over all the information from all the predecessors. And also you will have several forget gates. We also de design several forget gates. Uh, in terms of the parameterization, we explore two ways to parameterize a different age type. One is to assign each type a separate parameter. And we, ex uh, ex we experiment on a course um, on a coarse edge type, and we also try another embedding um, method to embed the edge type into a low dimensional space. And um, in the interest of, of time, I don't, I won't elaborate it in this talk, and you can check the details in the paper. Now, I also want to move 
favor on the multitask learning uh, aspect. So the multitask learning is motivated by the observation that all the, each underwear relation can be decomposed into several pairwise relations. And if you can make a correct prediction in the pairwise re uh, relations, you will be able to do well on the underwear relation. And in our example, when we consider drug gene mutation, Turner relation, we can decompose it to drug gene, uh, drug gene relation and drug mutation relations. And give you a visual um, illustration of the multi-pass learning framework. Basically, all the uh, all the relation extractor will have their own, own relation classifier. But they will share the same representation learner of graph LSTM and the objective function of the And we experiment uh, with the molecular tumor plot domain uh, to test how our, um, our framework performed. And we are looking to the kernel relation between drug gene and its mutation. And we get our training data by applying distance observation. And the knowledge base we, we use is the, the aforementioned BGKD and CIVIC. And the test we use is the PubMed central uh, articles. There is one million of four text articles. And with this method, we get 3,462 paragraphs about the drug gene mutation interactions. And we randomly sample some negative examples, the same size as the positive examples, to do our training. And because we're coping with the distance supervision, the evaluation is not as straightforward as the fully supervised version because the data we get is noisy. So instead of just uh, providing one point of the evaluation, we provide three aspects to evaluate the answer. The first aspect, uh, they, they are absolute ripple, sample precision, and automatic evaluation. The absolute we train our model on the, on the training data we get from distance supervision and we, uh, we conduct a PubMed scale extraction to see how many drug gene mutation positive examples we can get. And in the first line, it's the result we can get by match the uh, knowledge base we mentioned. And as you can see, by ma match the knowledge base, we were only able to get thousands of uh, distinct drug gene and mutation and their interactions. However, with the machine reading method, we were able to extract orders of magnitude more knowledges. Um, and if we consider the cross sentence case, it tripled the yield. And we conduct, uh, we report the sample precision by conduct manual evaluation. Uh, and we randomly sample 150 paragraphs and uh, we have humans to read through them and tell us whether these paragraphs are talking about the relations between uh, the entities. And we can see that if we draw a random sample, the precision will be less than 50%. However, if we draw the sample from our model and with a probability over 0.5, the precision will be uh, 40, uh, 40 64% and the, if, if the confidence of our model is 29, it will be 75%. And we also conduct automatic evaluation by using cross validation on, on our data set. And this way we can uh, compare it, uh, across the systems. And we can see that the neural architectures, uh, the right three parts, 